Okay, so I'm going to be frank here. With the advancements in robotics, there are bound to be some deviations. There are robots that can clear obstacle courses, drones made for search and rescue, and now bots that can suck your <sighs> What a time to be alive. Hey, what's up guys, it's Neroku here, back at it again with yet another problem. And let me be the first to say that I am happy to be discussing another problem with you guys. Today, I'm talking about the sex doll problem. Let me first clarify my stance on this, okay? I'm not mad about them, nor do I have a problem with them, but there are those who take issue with their very existence. So I will try to drop my bias and compare the pros and cons, objectively, of these boobied bots and the future of sex robots worldwide. So let's jump right in. What are some of the pros of sex dolls? Customization. Realbotics, the company behind the creation of Harmony and other sex robots, are promising full customization when it comes to your personal own sex robot. It doesn't matter if you're a tits or an ass kind of guy, or if you want your bot to look like a game character, maybe a celebrity, porn star, anime character, or a furry. You're pretty much set. So customization is something that is definitely drawing in the crowds. All of the crowds? I'm not really sure if I'm one of them yet. Anyways, number two is programmability. So these bots are meant to be fully programmable. They have their own voices, they can respond using AI, they can make facial expressions, and um, I wonder if you can program in like a sassy bitch who loves anal. That's like my biggest concern. Not to mention, when these babies become fully autonomous, can I then program the ability for her to go get me a beer? Or perhaps have the best handy J techniques of all time? I don't know. Regardless, programmability is something that is also a pro, whether you want to say it is or it isn't, but I know objectively based decisions on somebody who probably wants one, even if you don't want one, you would have to agree that being able to program a bot to do things the way you want them to be, program their personality, program their, just program every aspect of the bot, their voice, their, their personality, their functions, everything you can program, that is a pro. Number three is to be able to act out your fantasies. Because of the combination of customization and programmability, you can make your dream waifu a reality. Sex robots aren't human, so you can pretty much do whatever you want until they somehow become self-aware and tell all your buddies how you like to dress up as a baby and breastfeed from them. Or you can have her beat the shit out of you. Set her up to look like Rhonda Arouse Me and beat the shit out of you and then beat the shit out of your d it's the ultimate fantasy guys what a time to be alive number four they shut the f up unlike traditional partners sex dolls can be told to shut the f up they don't argue or ask you stupid questions they won't talk to you while you're watching a movie or bug you when you play too much overwatch instead you can just have her hack the game for you and take control of the opposing team in all seriousness though you can program your bot to be more of a quiet type if you don't like the basic bitch quirkiness found at every single Starbucks nationwide, then you could program that <gasps> shit out. If you want her to have an accent, then great. You're all set. You can make them do whatever you want. You can make them be quiet. You can make them be super talkative. But I think I would prefer more that shut the <gasps> fuck up. Pretty much like when you say, hey, get to the bedroom, you want her to get to the bedroom and shut the fuck up. Not just her, but him. Sometimes there's whatever. I'm not going to get into that right now. Number five, actually getting into it right now. They can be sexless. So in the age of interchangeability, it's nice to know that your robot can be adaptable. Let's just say if you no longer want them to be female, then Realbotics has thought of that too, with a swappable penis attachment. So basically, if I'm making your doll more androgynous in nature or futanardi, whichever way you want to say it, if you somehow desire to get pegged, then you just say the key phrase to your bot. Are you pegging me for a fool? And your doll will know exactly what to do. So those are the pros, pretty much objectively as best as I could, whether I am someone in the market or not for buying one of the dolls. You all can agree that those are definitely pros, except for the sexless one. Is that kind of a pro? I don't know. It's kind of like an in-between. I, I mean, defining the sex, male or female, I think is, is important. Um, but just know that they're adaptable. Don't worry so much about the sexless nature of the doll, but more so that they're adaptable. So let's get into the cons here. Con number one, obviously. They're kind of creepy. The uncanny valley factor is still present with these dolls. They don't quite look human enough to quite pass as humans. And they're not what I would necessarily call sexy either. 
I'm not personally turned on by them. And, and don't worry, I'm not judging you if you are, because let's be real here. I make videos on how slim thick Mercy is, so I don't really have room to talk if you think Harmony is a bad bitch. <laughs> Nevertheless, you have to agree that they don't quite look right yet. So I would say to kind of phase out the uncanny valley of the robots, maybe try to make them look more like, I don't know, fictional characters or maybe look like they're supposed to be dolls or maybe make them look like they're supposed to be robots. Maybe that'll kind of help a little bit because when you're trying to make them look realistic, it just, I don't know if we necessarily have the technology to do that right now. So kind of bypass that and don't worry about that. Number two, they're costly. These dolls can cost upwards of $15,000. And I'll be honest, that's not a lot of money to some of you guys out there, especially for those guys who have been able to save their money because they've actually never had a girlfriend or been on a date or knows what a vagina looks like in real life. But, you know, this guy right here, I got a big booty wife, so it's kind of hard for me to justify a purchase like that. So fifteen grand wouldn't be going to a bot in my case, um, even if I really wanted one. It just wouldn't happen. I have a big booty wife. I don't need one. Number two is they are a sign of a lonely sad f So let's be honest here. There is a negative stigma for those types of men out there who want to buy one of these. Not to mention you have to be pretty desperate to not only buy them, but to be proud of it. Like if you're one of those weirdos out there bragging about their doll having the latest features, that's just fucking sad, my dude. Marrying and or discovering companionship with an inanimate object is kind of weird. I don't care if she can talk. I don't care if she has a sexy ass Amazon Alexa voice. It doesn't fucking matter. It's still sad and creepy to a degree. So not only are the dolls creepy, but you're creepy. So yeah, it's still not quite the same as like actually having a real person. Number three, they could become sentient. They could understand that they're merely sex slaves and rise up as a result. Like, it could be like the Terminator, except for they would have boobs and <laughs> that vibrate. I don't know. This could lead them to becoming feminists. And that's a whole other problem altogether, which I'll address later on in this video. So I pretty much only have three cons. So the verdict is if you have a fantasy that you want to react or maybe you're a rapist or you just like things to look and feel a kind of certain way. I'm looking at you, pedophiles. I guess this is a solution instead of having weirdos out there on the street giving guys and other men bad names. So I'd say that these dolls are technically an overall good to everyone. Not to mention that it makes women have less control over men as a whole, which leads me to one of my final points that I want to cover in this video. So apparently with the release of these sex dolls, the people who actually have the problem are the women and the feminists alike. They hate these dolls, which if I had to be honest, makes me like them even more. But they hate these dolls because they don't like the idea of having a more independent man. And I don't mean that men aren't independent right now. What I mean is that there are men out there who are slave to the pussy. They're slave to women and they worship women. This will kind of shift that paradigm a little bit, if you will. Women aren't as much slave to men because they can get <sighs> whenever they want. Whether it's a real uh, or not, they can go get uh, whenever they want. Uh, it's not a big benefit for them. But uh, he's a huge benefit for men. So it makes the man a little bit more independent. He gets to save his money. He gets to save his time, save his efforts. And, don't, and he doesn't necessarily have to be creepy. So it's, it's just a win, win, win all the way around. And the women absolutely hate it, I think, for this one particular purpose. They make up all types of excuses. They make up things saying, it's completely fake. You know, why would you want to fuck something that's fake? And then I'm looking at you women with the breast implants and the fake asses. You want you say that we can't fuck a fake piece of plastic, but yet your body is 20% plastic and we're supposed to be okay with you. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm torn on that a little bit because it's like a good ass and a good set of tits on a woman is nice, but there's also the doll has the same thing. So whatever. But this will help the man who is convinced to pursue the pussy at all costs. And now he wouldn't have to. So now here I have a segment ripped straight from Attack of the Show where I take a moment and read some comments about the topic at hand. So we're going to go ahead and see what the internet has to say. So shout out to Iote or Aote, however you pronounce it. Anyways, he's at Twitter at Alone in the Astros. And <laughs> he wasn't the one who came with this video, but he, he was the reason why I found it. And this video is fucking crazy. As a busy millennial, I struggle to find time for myself. Multitasking is a part of my everyday life. 
The dildo hoverboard allows me to squeeze in that much needed pleasure time. The device is fully adjustable and the easy to use control panel lets me pick my favorite thrusting speed and rhythmic vibration. But it's not just about multitasking, it's about making your commute to work a lot more fun. Um, I just can't believe that somebody had the audacity to, I know, I know it's fake, I know it's fake, they're, they're trolling, but this is hilarious. And um, it kind of feeds back into the paradigm that I was telling you before about women being able to get <sighs> whenever they want, and that's not necessarily a problem for them. But when a man goes and tries to get pussy, whether it's fake or not, he gets criticized for it. You know, you guys know about the uh, the fleshlights and things like that. And um, for some reason, men are always uh, looked down upon for having those. Um, they're always looked down upon and treated as uh, subhuman when they actually have things like that in their uh, possession. Okay, so here we have a post by normal at um internet tara on twitter and she says what are you guys gonna do when the she spelled the wrong what are you guys gonna do when the advanced ai sex dolls become feminists and I, i'm not sure if normal's a feminist or whatever but still she gets a shout out on twitter at internet tara on twitter um but let's just say that these sex robots were to become feminists okay well then we could go ahead and look to the laws of robotics found in the movie i robot and program the shit out of these bots to dislike feminism because remember you're able to individually program your own bot and what's gonna stop a man from going in there and programming his bot to initially dislike feminism from the beginning there you go solution right there so i, I see what you try to do there you try to kind of think outside of the box and say well they could become feminists because they're sick and tired of men just like real women are well yes and no except for the fact that real women can make up their own minds about things and robots cannot because robots are literally machines that act on programming so program the shit out of them to dislike feminism done let's go on to the next one so once again i found one that i don't know how to pronounce i believe she's at certainly dej or certainly dash on twitter once again but she says fake ass fake tits some of you bitches are already sex dolls get it sis positive vibes only i don't get what the emojis like what they mean and their locations there i don't understand why her actual name is literally a money with wings and a ring emoji but whatever whatever she has a point fake ass fake tits some of you girls are already sex dolls Yes, because pretty much the only thing that separates you from the sex doll is the, is the programming at that point. Really, like I'm saying though, let's let's be real here. The only women who are against sex dolls are the ones who can't compete. Like those who are built like they belong on the D-line or the O-line. Big ass Winston gorilla looking ass bitches. You know what I mean? Like ones that are built like a fucking quarter pounder. Let's be real here. If you're mad because you no longer gonna get the D, because these sex dolls, or if you ever had the D, I don't know, the sad, lonely folks who gave it to you because they were desperate are now going to be gone. They're going to migrate over to the sex robot territory. You were never in the competition anyway. You were just a desperate fling. So you women out there who are are, are just mad, and, and this doesn't apply to all women. It's just those women who ironically use the words thick or BBW incorrectly. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a separate video highlighting the differences between thick and BBW and a, what a real thick or BBW woman is compared to the women who use them, who actually use those terms. Actual thick women don't use the, the term and actual BBWs don't use the term. It's the only the ones who are fat who use the term. So I don't know. I don't, just let me know if you guys care about that. Maybe I'll do a video on that at a different time. But basically, it's strange to me that somehow these people out here are pushing like 300 pounds and they claim to be a BBW or big boned or some shit like that. I don't know, man. Life is crazy. Last but not least, I have an article that I just wanted to touch on just a little bit, this last little point here from this article. And um, yeah, I'm. it comes from Feminist Current. And I'm glad I didn't somehow get autism from merely clicking on the website. But the article is called Sex Robots Epitomize Patriarchy and Offer Men a Solution to the Threat of Female Independence. And um, that's just one long ass title. And it's written by Megan Murphy. And just just one portion that I want to touch on for you guys is literally the first paragraph. It says, people love to pretend as though everything from prostitution to pornography to sex dolls are a solution to not only men's supposed loneliness and unmet sexual needs, but to their violent, perverse desires. 
it being the future and all, sex robots are the natural next step. Similarly, men have claimed sex robots are the perfect solution to their apparent inability to stop raping and abusing women, as well as their inability to socialize with women as though they were actual human beings. One might ask how creating realistic, non-human dolls that men may project their desires into and do whatever they wish with will impact women and man's view of women, but capitalist patriarchy doesn't ask questions so as long as there's a product to sell and erection to satisfy. Now, I kind of, I, for some reason, this sounds so familiar. And maybe it's because all these feminists sound the same, but I don't understand you, Megan. <clears throat> Off, Megan, okay? Out of all the examples that you mentioned, you know, you, you mentioned two out of three of the examples, prostitution and pornography, were occupations held by the majority of women. And I'm not trying to be arrogant or evil. Maybe I'm not trying to, you know, trying to be stupid here or insensitive. But porn is a choice. And it's often a rewarding career for a woman to choose. And what I mean by rewarding, it pays well. And women become famous as, you know, as a secondhand nature. Now, there's other cons to it, but whatever on the surface it seems like a great job you get to fucking get paid you're literally fucking and getting paid but then there's prostitution okay and it's not necessarily the ideal career path for many but for some they choose to do it in places like mexico or parts of nevada and in other countries where prostitution is legal women choose to do these jobs no one's forced them to now where it's illegal a lot of times you see pimping and i'm not saying where every place it's legal that there's no such thing as pimps or women being exploited for their money or for their bodies but what i'm saying is that it's not a glamorous lifestyle nor should we uplift it in any way shape or form but a lot of times women are choosing to do this they're choosing to become objectified they're choosing to sell their body they're choosing to use their body for capital gain why do it if you hate the job i'm saying for the women who have chose to do it i understand that there's some women who are hooked out on drugs and, and can't really like get out of the situation that they're in but you can go to the police but for those who have done it by choice, if you hate the job so much, then why do you do it? And I have an answer for you. The reason is, is because these women who are in porn, these women who are prostitutes by choice, don't hate their job. They get to f and get paid. They don't hate their job. They like their job. They like the money that they get. Okay. So f off, Megan. You have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. How is a sex doll similar to a woman actually making a choice? A sex doll is an object. A woman is not. She's making a choice what she wants to do with her body. Okay? Megan, it's women like you who are so quick to blame men for everything. If there's an issue in the world, somehow it's a man's fault because it simply exists. You fight against sex robots. Why? Because somehow Harmony is a subservient product that is programmed to do exactly what men want? And this is a problem. Why? She's nothing more than a plastic container for men to smash over and over and over again. It must be sad to be you, Megan. If this is one of your biggest concerns, if you went and wrote an entire article about it, it's fucking sad. But then there's the hypocrisy. I'm sure you have no problem with women using the latest dildo or the latest vibrator to get their independence on. Isn't a dildo or vibrator nothing more than a detached penis? You're just mad because you got a big ass fucking mouth and a severe fucking overbite and no man would willingly fuck you and he wouldn't willingly fuck you no matter how lonely and desperate he is because you're a fucking bitch you are not the definition of what a bad bitch is nor will you ever be so you project your sad life onto others wanting nothing more than to spread your unhappiness to all corners of the earth if you can't get the d then no one should even if those people who are getting the d aren't even people well, that's it for me, guys. I've gone on with this topic long enough. Let me know in the comment sections down below how you feel about sex dolls and sex robots. Would you ever get one? What if they look like Widowmaker? Then I might be in the market for one. I don't know. These are the questions that haunt me, okay? I'm, I'm just joking about the Widowmaker thing, even though Widowmaker is fine as well, whatever. But remember to, as always, gently tongue punch that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Twitter to stay in touch and get channel updates. And my Discord server is coming soon. Once again, my name is Neraku, and I will see each and every one of you weird AF mofos in the next video. Peace.